seminars are starting. Love Talk Radio. And- Hello. Hi, Amelia. This is Joe? Rosemary, and I'm sitting Hi. at home, sitting, actually sitting outside in the front lawn in the sun, because um, um, probably uh, Chris told you he, we were ready to sit sit down and get working on that, and he remembered he didn't have the Wi-Fi, so that's what delayed him. So uh, I'm here, but I'm listening. Okay, it's very interesting, Rosemary, because the studio, um, I actually signed in as host, and I've uh-huh. got no record of myself here in the studio, so it's a little bit different today. Um, will you just speak there until I, until I say something, and I will see... Um, Okay, I think I've got fixed now. Okay, well, Rosemary, I'm just about to tell people about the seminars. Um, I I, I will tell them about the seminars. So on the 22nd and the 23rd of March, we're going to have the seminar in New York. And this is happening about 35 miles north of New York City. And I'm really looking forward to it. The setting is a a retreat and conference center looking over the Hudson River. And um, what has actually happened is we have a place available at this seminar still. So um, there was a cancellation and a place is now available. So if any of the listeners would like to come to this seminar on the 22nd and the 23rd of March, please get in with me. My email address is kundalinimatters at gmail.com and I can give you further details on that. Um, the second seminar is happening in Europe, and this is going to be in Newgrange, County Meath, Ireland. And as I've explained to listeners in other uh, radio shows, this is actually a very easy destination if you're living in Europe. We have a number of people already booked in, but there are some places still available for that seminar as well. Um, that one is a two-day fully residential seminar. It begins on Friday. Well, it doesn't actually begin on Friday, but um, people arrive on Friday night to the seminar house, and the seminar itself begins then on Saturday morning. If you fly into Dublin Airport, you will be collected from the airport and driven to the venue. Um, The seminar will begin then after breakfast on Saturday morning and will continue throughout the day with lunch. Um, And we will finish up around 5 or 6 on Saturday. The following day, CRISM is going to bring us, as part of the seminar, to Newgrange itself. Now, Newgrange is a megalithic site, um, very, very ancient, actually older than the pyramids. And just as we did in the last seminar, we are going to go right into the centre of this Uh, passage tomb or ancient temple and this is something I'm really looking forward to because we had a wonderful experience there the last time so then we will continue we will go back to the seminar venue and continue with the seminar until later that evening around six o'clock when we will finish so again if anybody is interested in attending anybody living in Ireland or the United Kingdom or a place in Europe please Yep, you're, 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 you're cutting out, Amelia. You're, you're cutting out here. Hello, everyone. This is Chris. I'm, and I don't know if you heard the last part of Amelia's announcement. Amelia, if you're there, go ahead and make it again. Let's see if it comes through. Okay, Chris. I was just telling people that the seminar is happening on the 28th. And that um, if they have any interest in attending, if they're living in Ireland or living in the United Kingdom or any place in Europe, to get in contact with me and I can help them with my email address is finishmaster at gmail.com. Thank you. Are you? Okay. I'm actually going to disconnect Prism because there's something strange going on here with the studio and I will call back in again. Okay. Wow. Rosemary, 
Are you still online? Rosemary? Uh, Amelia? Okay, that's fine. Yes, Prism? Go ahead and disconnect. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. I uh, hope you're able to hear me. Um, if you can't hear me, please, one of you in the chat room, call in, and uh, we'll continue with this. Yeah. So the United States has had their daylight savings, which you just got to love because it confuses everybody in the world about what time is going on in, in other parts of the, of the world. It's, not, it's bad enough that we have time zones. But now we have to play with them in order to make the sunshine correlate longer with the clock, uh, a perfectly good way to confuse everybody for a few weeks. Anyway, so today I would like to discuss with you uh, about your Kundalini Awakening experience, the, uh, some of the blockages that may come up for a person. Once again, uh, Call me if you can't hear me or I'm not coming through clearly. I know I'm at this cafe and they got this silly music playing. Oh, my God. I asked them to turn it down, but, you know, I guess they're just so in love with their beach boys and whatever. And shouting at each other that, uh, you know, we're just going to have to deal with that as best as possible. So one of the things that will come up, of course, is fear. When the uh, kundalini symptoms come on in a, in a greater way, uh, the strangeness of the experiences will cause a normal person to go straight into fear. And, uh, of course, this is, uh, these are one of the trials that a person may, uh, may experience with regards to the kundalini. And so I want you to understand that, yes, Absolutely, strange things beyond your control are going to happen. Let me say that again. Strange things, strange phenomena beyond your mental or physical control are going to happen. And this is normal for the Kundalini. Uh, even though, you know, we have the Internet now and it seems like Kundalini people are a dime a dozen, Kundalini yoga, Kundalini reiki. I imagine they even have Kundalini horseback riding now. You know, uh, uh, maybe the next stop is a Kundalini soft drink beverage that you can get at the fountain. And, of course, in the United States, you can supersize. <laughs> so, so, anyway, there's a lot of Kundalini baloney out there. But for those of you that have the real thing, that have uh, looked at your symptoms and compared them to, to what we have on our website, Kundalini Awakening System, the number one dot com, you can be pretty well uh, confident that you are indeed having actual Kundalini, uh, actual Kundalini, and you know the developmental aspects of that actual Kundalini. So. You may feel fear, and it's okay to feel that fear because of those symptoms. You may feel those fears. But in many ways, because you have this information right now, uh, uh, you have this information right now, looks like I'm going to be escorted out of this uh, this uh, establishment here in about 40 minutes or somewhere around there. They're having a big meeting here. Not that I knew of in advance. So this may be a shorter conversation than we would normally have. Uh, so with regards to these phenomena that occur, the phenomena will occur, you know, everywhere from your dreams to extraordinary phenomena such as having visions or such as having uh, 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 visitations by what normal people would just call spirits or, you know, what I call uh, entities or, ex, you know, non-corporeal consciousness. Uh, so these, these folks will often come to visit, and uh, just the visitation itself uh, can cause great levels of excitability, um, fear, or ecstasy and bliss. You know, depends on the 
on the level of, of evolution that the visiting entity has with itself and what its purpose in visiting you is. So with that in mind, I, I want you to just take hold of yourself. You're having Kundalini. It's a very, very strong uh, teaching. And do your best through this information to not fall into fear. Do your best to not fall into fear. Okay. Uh, Amelia, do you have a question? Is, is that what I see here in the studio? No, Chris, no question at all. Just chatting it up with Rosemary. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, some, because of the fear or because of some of the other phenomena, uh, some blockages may occur within your system, and you just need to understand that this is something that can happen. The ego in you uh, is the one who that fears the most if not all the fear, is really directed outward from the ego, uh, not understanding what is occurring and not having control over what is occurring. So understand that a lot of the blockages are just coming straight from you. Uh, they may be caused by phenomena, but the blockage is coming from the ego, and you need to understand that you have control over the levels of fear that you wish to engage in. Okay. The phenomena is not going to go away. In some cases, it will expand. And so I'm going to suggest that you, you open your heart, you open your arms, you open your happiness, you open your joy into receiving the benefits and the gifts of grace that are coming your way vis-a-vis strange phenomena, phenomena that you're not used to, phenomena that in some way, because it's out of your control can cause you fear. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring Rosemary on. Rosemary? Yes. Can you hear a lot of the cafe noise around me here? No, actually, Christian, I don't. I, I don't know where you are, but I don't hear that at all. No. Thank I'm you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amelia, do you hear this? Cafe yes. noise? Yes, I, yes, I do. Okay, all right. Lots, lots oh. of chat in the background, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, all right. Thank you. So I apologize uh, for this. Pretty sure if I go outside, it's going to be even noisier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and uh, continue as long as I can, and I apologize for the noise in the background. Uh, for any of you who would like to make a donation uh, so that we can have Internet consistently like we, you know, we're used to having it uh, here in the States, uh, you can go to uh, ascension-kundalini at uh, uh, blogspot. Uh, Amelia, give me, give me that address. <laughs> give, me, give that address. Okay, it's... Uh <laughs> it's www dot ascension dash You don't remember it either, do you? Dot, dot, dot. It's gone. But I tell you what you can do. You can just Google Ascension Kundalini Blogspot, and you will. It's the first thing that comes on the Google search. So Google search Ascension Kundalini Blogspot, and you have dress there. So that's the shortcut. Okay. Thanks, Amelia. It's actually the best way. Okay, all right. So, um, yeah, yeah, this will take us out of the cafes and, and back into the living room there. But anyway, so as the blockages come, you may feel it as a bulge at the base of your spine. You may feel it as a place where the, as the kundalini is rising up, it, it, it's not stationary so much. It's, it's climbing the spine in, to some degree. Uh, for many people, not all people feel it like this, but many of the folks do. The majority of the people do. Uh, as so, as the Kundalini climbs the spine, it'll uh, you can kind of see it as if you if you as if you're looking at a thermometer and the and the mercury, which is colored red, is at the bottom. It's at that bulb in the bottom of the phenomena of the uh, thermometer, 
And that would be your Kundalini. And, and you can see it rising as a direct uh, line of red going up your But it's not as slow as it can be quite fast. And uh, you'll have movement, say, from the first to the second, all the way up to the fourth, maybe back to the second, coming up to the third. Uh, it, it will manifest a, often as a very fast, a solid line of resistance within within the spine. And by resistance, I only mean that it's something that you your your body can feel. You can feel the energy going up the spine. Uh, and it and because it's tactile, it, it forms a level of tactility resistance that allows you to feel it at all. So I'm not uh I'm certainly not saying that, you know, this is in some way resisting the Kundalini. It's not. It's not that way at all. So as you feel the the kundalini energy climb your spine, in, in some in some cases it'll climb up all the way to the back of the head and stop. Okay, this is okay. All of these manifestations of the kundalini going up and down or climbing the spine or being stationary within the spine at a certain chakra, these are all normal uh, responses to the kundalini. Don't let that frighten you at all. Uh, another type of... Uh, situation that can develop is is you can begin to to have pretty wild dreams and in the dream life uh, as I mentioned in some of the other conversations visions and teaching scenarios can occur for you uh, as best you can bring those into your daily waking life uh, if you have a question for me about that feel free to contact me at uh, K as in Kundalini Fire for all. So that's all one. K fire for F O R all. Uh, K F I R E F O R A L L at yahoo.com. And uh, feel free to uh, to ask a question there. Looks like we have a question, Amelia. Okay, I guess she's talking with the caller. So, yeah. Uh, these phenomena and these blockages, sometimes the blockages are necessary. Sometimes you just need to to feel out a situation and look at your levels of fear, look at the levels of exercise you're getting, look at the levels of, of dietary support you're getting, look at the levels of validation for this process that you're receiving. Um, don't... Uh, don't feel that it's all just one thing or another. There are many, many combinations of scenarios that can develop within the Kundalini experience itself that will allow blockages to exist. Yes, Amelia. Hello, Chris, and you've got a caller on the left to ask you a question, and it's Lorne. I'm patching you through now. Okay, thank you. Hey, Chris, I'm Lorne here. Hi, Lorne. How are you? Doing pretty good. I haven't called in since the uh, fall of last year. <laughs> Welcome back. But I've been listening to most of the blogs. Sometimes I get to listen to the live stuff, but not usually all the way through. Well, thank um, you. Thank since you you're talking about the phenomena and uh, a few things like that, I, I wanted to kind of talk to you about um, I, I guess I've been going, I, last time I talked to you, I've been going through more of the energetic phenomena. Um, and it's been as the blockages are clearing out more and more, it's getting more and more intense and more and more energy just, 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 you know, those chakras are just exploding, <laughs> turning into vortexes. My head's just turning into this massive vortex of stuff and stuff coming not just through the basic chakras, but, you know, shooting up through the legs and pulsating through. And I was just interesting, uh, interested in knowing where this is kind of leading up to. I mean, my head, my my crown seems to be opening up more and more. I've had some huge heart center stuff opening up, and again, as the energy builds and more of the stuff opens up, it seems like it just you know builds and builds and shoots up more and more and opens up more and more. And I mean, this this has got to stop sometime. <laughs> It can go on for a long time, Lauren. Well, can it? Uh, yeah, it can go on for years. I have one gentleman, uh, wonderful man, wonderful man. He's have it. He's been having electrical creas for three years. Wow. Okay, that means 
He's like sitting on high voltage wires every day, every night, on the job, in the car. Matter of fact, uh, he rear-ended somebody the other day because it affected his eyesight. And so I had to give him a certain exercise that would help him not to lose his depth perception on the road. So okay. These, yeah, these, this phenomena can just go on and on and on. And I want you, Lauren, to embrace that phenomena. Embrace it completely. Make sure that you're having a, an intelligent conversation with your kundalini, just the way you and I are talking right now. Have that level, uh, and, and an even greater level if you can attain it, uh, have, have that level of conversation with your kundalini. Now, it may respond or it may not respond. It depends a lot on, on your, your level of acceptance, your level of validation of the kundalini having its way with you in your life. Okay. It's only there to help, but in our, in our society, it can be kind of a, of a, a difficult thing because we have expectations of how life should be. And when the kundalini does things to us that that allows our expectations of life to be altered in some grand or even a, a, a mild way, uh, it can cause great upset for us. And so uh, really embrace the phenomena, but without, you know, and here, here's a caveat to my statement is without becoming addicted to it, accept the phenomena as a gift that it is, and your chakras are exploding, your chakras are really being uh, infused right now with the kundalini, and within that infusion lies a great gateway into uh, a, a kundalini level of divine embodiment within a physical being, which that physical being is you, Lorne. Mm -hmm. uh, really begin to understand the, the magnitude of what is occurring for you. These phenomena, these phenomena are, are like a great uh, announcement of your birth into the divine physical or the flesh made divine, the divine flesh. Uh, and, and really understand that this is life changing stuff here that, that, is there for you to embrace. For sure, for can you sure. Hear, can you hear me all right, Lauren? Oh, yeah. No, you can make you loud and clear. Thanks. Oh, very good, very good. So tell me about what chakras are really being lit up for you. Uh, pretty much all of them. Uh, okay. I, I, when the sacral one gets very painful when it lights up. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. pretty much all of them. And as you were just describing, they, 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 they can vary around. You know, sometimes they'll open up. Uh, the throat stuff, and then suddenly the heart stuff opens up, and sometimes the other direction. And yeah, the, yeah. lately, it's the lately the crown is just doing just wild and crazy stuff. I mean, it's, I've had that experience where you know your top of your head disappears, and just nothing but this energy vortex kind of pulsating through. It's it's, it's, it's cool phenomena. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and, and and so so with that in mind, have you had a spinal sweep yet? Oh. Years ago, no, I've been, Medium. I've been okay. uh, probably the last two summers away. So I'm, I'm matured along the way. My spinal sweep was about two, uh, two years ago. So no, I'm not Excellent. in a rising state. I'm pretty much in the cleaning, purging, transforming, whatever <laughs> you'd call it, state. You're, Very you're in the awake stuff coming through. You're, yeah, you're in the but awake. Fully, oh, definitely fully awakened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, with that in mind, now this gets into a more solid level of of interaction between you and the kundalini you have already had the communion with the godhead or with the divine with god basically uh, you have already had that oneness and it only really takes just one immersion into that ocean of grace and you are forever changed after that and and that forever change uh, can occur over a number of years okay the awakening of the kundalini or the activation of it uh, is a fairly simple uh, exercise in, in uh, evolution for any person. But living with the awakened kundalini, now that's a very different scenario. 
basically what we're doing here is we're teaching people how to be semi-divine. Mm. This is it. This is the real mm-hmm. school of, of semi-divinity. And the Kundalini is one of the first classrooms that a person will need to go through, will have to go through, in order to have this great gift come upon them or, and actually come from within them as an expression from the inside to the outside environment. And so with that in mind, Lauren, and and for all of those who are listening that have uh, very similar uh, symptomology as Lauren does, uh, this is the great work, as some of the uh, magicians would put it. Uh, This is the actual transmutation of the physical into the divine and yet retaining the physical expression as a way to give a greater levels of divinity upon this planet, upon this world, upon the many different ecosystems and sociological systems that exist on this world. And so, Lauren, you occupy an, ex- an incredibly important radiate, radiating point of grace in this world, as does each and every one of, of the Kundalini awakened people. And, I, you know, I'm talking to people that don't really understand what's going on with them, that, you know, they're having difficulties with this. You, Lauren, because you, you've, been, you've been doing this for a number of years now, and you've been following, uh, you've been following I think, these, these programs. You have, a great, you have a great level of information to give and a great level of radiance to open to being given through you into these environments, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and what I'm going to suggest that you do uh, with regards to this is, that's uh, too bad. I mean, I was going to have you do the other, sh- the Shakti pot um, that I I just I just gave well, Scatter. That's one question I was going to ask you because um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mother Mira. Yeah. Um, she's coming to town uh, in the, the area we're living in. I wasn't sure I wasn't felt comfortable that it's a form of Shakti pot and whether or not being this far in the process, it's something that um, yeah. I could benefit uh, from you, still. Or I would say uh, probably not. Uh, Mother Mira, she comes with a lot of entities. Oh, okay. okay. Hanging around. And she, well, yeah, there's just a big cloud of them. And a lot of what she has to say, I think, is really beneficial for the masses who are not awakened. And therefore, they're not susceptible to the discarnate interaction that, that comes with a visit by Mother Mira or Ama or, you know, any of these, these, these great uh, feminine personages that, that come, uh, come to town, so to speak. Uh, they come with a horde of entities, and a lot of them aren't the, the best. I see. We're, I'm starting to really get uh, crowded out here at this cafe. You can hear all of that shouting? Yes. It's not yeah, overwhelming, yeah. though. Your voice is coming too loud and clear still. Oh, well, thank you. It's okay, okay. Crazen. It's, it's actually okay. It's in the background, and the ears become very climatized to it. So don't worry <laughs> about it. Okay. If it becomes too much, I will let you know. It, really, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much, Nan. No, that, no I, I'm quite pleased to hear your, uh, your input on uh, whether or not that would be something worth uh, be, be careful well, about. Here's the thing. is that like, like n- These women are not necessarily Kundalini awakened at all. You know, they've been given a certain job to do, and within that, within that job, uh, there's more of a channeling event that's going on without it being advertised as channeling. Uh, Ama, okay. Well, for some reason, when I was checking her out, I thought they, she had been Kundalini awakened from a young age. And she well, was, they will uh, say that. More or less sit there, and you kind of get, get the radiance off of her, and she works on blockages and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they they will say that about almost Indian, almost any Indian. Ah. Thing. They just you know, oh well, obviously she's Kundalini awakened, whether or not gotcha. it's true. Gotcha. You know, and there's a great there's a great level of commercialism around a lot of these fitness. Not to say that she's not doing good work. I'm not saying that at all. I think she's probably doing very good work, especially 
for the for the uh, the populations that are not yet within the Kundalini understanding. Um, if you know, if, if if Mother Mira and Ama and all of these uh, Nityananda, some of these really strongly commercialized uh, personages, if they really, really, really cared about a level of kundalini grace within a person, well, they would have put out protocols and, and safeties and, and instructions that would help people with the kundalini. They don't do that. They're more geared yep. towards the mass. They just open it to the public. And, yeah, I've seen that, a bit of that in another other, some other spiritual uh, stuff that I was exposed to, and I'm pretty much staying away from them now because of exactly that. Yeah, yeah, and so you know, I I want to, I really do want to go out of my way to not uh, to to not indicate that you know that they're doing bad work or you know because they have negative entities around them, they also have good entities around them too. Okay, but with a Kundalini awakened person such as you, Lauren, you're red flagged. You're red flagged for entities to come, and you don't necessarily need all that. Let me tell you something. With great, great light, a great dark shadow is also formed. And we can partake of the light, but we also have to be ready to partake of the shadow as well. And these Mm. are not shadows that are definitely uh, associated with you or Rosemary or Amelia or me or or any of the people that are listening. Uh, These are shadows that that are significantly associated with with the person that is doing the speaking or the healing or the whatever it is they're doing. Okay. And so when you listen to me, I have done the shadow work and I continue to do the shadow work. Does Ama say that? No. Does does Mother Mira say that? No. no. Does Nityananda say that? No. Uh, you know, a lot of these people are not willing to to step up to the plate and say, oh, wow, well, I've, I've done the shadow work too. I've appreciated both sides of the Tao. And most, most of them, especially when they're dealing with the general public, will just basically say, oh, no, 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 I'm perfect already. It's just fine. You can trust me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Give me the money. <laughs> buy the ticket. Buy the book. Buy whatever it is, right? So with you, Lauren, you're far enough into this process, you don't need a Mother Mira or an Ama or a Nityananda or anybody outside of the Kundalini within you. You don't need to take any advice or diksha or anything that is not what your Kundalini is directing you to have. Now, now if you all of a sudden had a dream of Mother Mira, you know, staring into your eyes and going, Oh, my child, Lauren come and visit me when I come to your town. If you're, if you're not getting that, then don't go. Yeah, gotcha. gotcha. You need to pay attention to your kundalini now. She will tell you what she wants you to do. And, and she won't necessarily tell you in words, Lauren. She'll tell you in energetic pulses, which are another form of language uh, that the kundalini gives. Right on. She will, yeah, she will. Are you are you remembering your dreams at all? I'm getting more vivid dreams, and I'm I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember them. I'm not. I've always had a bad thing where I don't remember much, and you know, most of them are so wackadoodle I can't relate to anything. But, but uh, much more vivid than uh, as, as I'm going going along here. Much more vivid. Yeah, try to start a dream journal. The reason why I suggest this is that it begins to give you an idea of what the Kundalini wants you to learn through the dream state. Mm. Until you start uh, a dream journal, you're, you're, you're not really remembering the lessons that, that you are having in the, the sleep state. And so it's very gotcha. important. Uh, you know, I'm going yeah, to call it. still empty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to I'll see what I can do. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And the thing is, is it, it will open up a whole level of learning for a person. The dream state can be exceptionally volatile. 
with regards to the level of teachings that the Kundalini can open up a person to. If you want a, a faster and a more concise understanding of what the Kundalini has in store for you, take the dreams and begin to interpret the dreams from a Kundalini awakened standpoint. Um, I don't know. I think I have touched on the dream interpretation through Kundalini uh, in a couple of the earlier programs. But dream interpretation within a Kundalini awakened reference is very different than what you're going to get in a book, uh, you know, the typical Western understandings of, of dreams. You know, so for instance, you know, you dream of a snake and the snake's coiled around your left leg and, you know, it's not biting you, but it's you're, you're walking with it and it's there. And, you know, a lot of the dream uh, interpretive books would go, oh, wow, you got a disease on your left leg. It's going to fall off or you're going to, you know, they see the snake as an evil person and it's just not at all. It is the, you know, it's the Kundalini Shakti letting you know that she's going to start coming up your left leg. That simple, or, or or an octopus, or an octopus wrapping itself around your your leg. Same thing, same thing, or a spider. Okay. Now these things would typically uh, be phenomena that that are are fear laden for the for the unawakened person. It doesn't have to be that way for you, Lauren. Yeah, I can't say that I've had a lot of fear ones. They've been very strange ones with, you know, going back for almost like education stuff, which is probably me educating myself about things and uh, other probably, ones that I, I just can't more even relate a, to. It's just like, what the? <laughs> it's probably but more that about nothing the, to do with uh, you the, the about will some, what I would call symbology type stuff yet. So, yeah, I have to watch for those. The, 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 Can I take a minute Kundalini. to ask you a couple more questions, or you want to sure, move on sure. to something else? No, no, no. No, take your time. Okay. Um, one thing I want to ask you is, with the energy, sometimes I, I find myself into uh, very, not just the blissful states, but where you've got a very, um, what I would call a mind-body disconnect. You just feel tranquil. You're just your mind. You're just kind of one with the universe and other occasions where you're, you're uh, essentially the, your your whole head just feels full of light, and you're just you're just you know part of part of the, uh, the universe kind of thing. And what I was wondering was, I, I usually just kind of stay in those states. You know, oh, this feels about right, and you know, okay, time time's up. That's enough of that. Is it something that I should be kind of prolonging and getting because there's more kind of benefit that's going on with that those states? I will suggest or, that you. I will suggest that you. Uh, I like the prolonging of it, but because that that's a level of acceptance and a level of no resistance, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. I would definitely suggest the prolonging aspects of it. Uh, um, yeah, and I'm going to have to move here in a second. So I'm moving right now. Thank you. <laughs> moving somewhere else in the restaurant here. Pardon me for that. Um, okay. Okay, so, you know, so hang in there it, and let it do its thing. And, okay, that's well, good. Embrace it. Don't, don't yep. just... Don't just have it perform for you. Embrace mm-hmm. it and engage it and allow it to begin to call the shots and how long it wants to give you that phenomena. Don't go for control. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, don't go for control. Now, speaking of control, um, one thing I did want to ask you was uh, you've had on some other uh, discussions try to work in, try to, I guess, enhance your intuition muscles and I find that you know maybe something's happening but it's not like I'm feeling by this whole process that I, I'm getting you know that stronger intuition and you mentioned some you know interesting things where you take people out into the woods and you know blindfold them and they have to go out are there some things I should be kind of maybe working with around the house or helping having people work with me on certain things to kind of work those muscles Okay, yeah, no, that's a that's an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, the intuitive muscles are 
are really tied into your level of of, of the awakening within you. Okay, the Kundalini will exalt the intuition. So basically, the intuition becomes another conduit of communication between you and your Kundalini. To to get those muscles strong is to really begin to trust and and to accept uh, and learn the many different protocols that are involved in 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 learning how to communicate with the Kundalini. Now, the dream state, as I mentioned before, is one of these areas. Now, when you're when you're with a physical teacher, like say with Amelia, you know, I was with her in the forest and and uh, I took her on a on a on a route on our hands and knees uh, through the underbrush of a pine forest of a of a Norwegian pine forest that they have planted in Ireland, and and then I basically said, okay, just follow me, and I was totally lost. I was completely lost because I don't know this forest, right? I live in California. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I got myself as completely lost as I could. And let me tell you about the forest. There's bogs there. There's these these ditches that fill with water. There's, the trees are very dense because, you know, they're using them for commercial purposes. And so once you're completely lost in the forest, then you just you – just, Ask your kundalini to help you. Mm. And then, you, then you're then you able to begin to discern what the best way home will be. And you you, you begin to, to disconnect your, your mental ideology about what it is to find your way. Uh, you begin to dis, uh, disengage that and you allow your spiritual compass to take control. You allow your trust in the kundalini to take control and this is this is further enhanced by understanding the language of kundalini the language of kundalini has to do with color has to do with sound has to do with nature has to do with with all forms of nature all forms of natural environments and has to do with a a compulsion from the heart your heart will pull you a certain way. Your heart will pull you another way. And it is in that pulling, that recognition that, ah, this is the kundalini pulling me over here. Well, then I need to go over here. Mm, okay. Gotcha. This allows you to develop the muscles. The muscles of intuition are based in trust. Trust is like the protein that forms those, those intuitive muscles. The more you trust your kundalini and the more knowledge and the more information you get from sources that, that your kundalini leads you to, the greater your level of intuitive interaction with the kundalini will become. Mm. And listening, because, you know, when I, I had a situation on the weekend, I didn't listen. I, I heard myself pretty much a couple times saying, do this, do this, and I said, nah, nah, nah. And then something fell off the rails because... <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Now, and, and, and other forms of intuitive trust would be well. With Kundalini, it's typically when <laughs> when things are on the line. You know, uh, another form of trust I had was the Kundalini asked me to go to a casino when I didn't have any money. I had very little money, and so I felt the urge, the pull from the heart, as I mentioned to you, mm-hmm. took me to a casino, and. That was all the money I had in the world. And I trusted the Kundalini. I went and I played what machines and what card games it wanted me to play. I sat at the tables where it wanted me to sit. All of a sudden, a space opens up and boom, that's where she wants you to be. Or she'll flash a picture of a certain machine that she wanted me to play in my mind. And because I was just, I was just, so open and just so trusting and so sincerely involved with the Kundalini that I was just going to go wherever she wanted to take me with it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I walked in with like 30 some odd dollars. I forget what the actual amount was, but I walked out with over (laughs) $5,000 simply because I trusted the Kundalini. And this is what, 
allowed me to start the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website and to have a computer and to to put on the Santa Cruz seminar, the Marin seminar, and then some of the other seminars that that I totally lost all my money at. <laughs> That's okay too. Um, if you if you are able, Lauren, to to allow the Kundalini to come to you and trust it with things that matter. Okay? That was all the money I had, period. Okay, so that was laying it all on the line right there from a first chakra survival level, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that is kind of the areas that, that you may want to look at with regards to surrendering yourself to this divine energy. It okay. knows it knows what's true and what isn't with you. It's like Santa Claus. It knows when you've been happy, knows when you're not been happy, so to speak. And it knows what level of risk you're taking in trusting the Kundalini. It knows what level of risk you're taking. And if you're not taking a risk, then you may not get as strong a, a, shall we say, as strong of a communication as I did with the casino. Gotcha. And maybe that's part of my problem. I'm fairly conservative. I'm not a big risk taker. Well, I'm not suggesting anybody goes to the casino. (laughs) (laughs) No, not that. (laughs) But, yeah, Uh, that's much appreciated. I am suggesting. Okay, I'll leave you to it. I appreciate all your uh, your input, and I'll be listening in some more. Thanks again. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. Uh, And and so as I was suggesting to Lauren, everybody, uh, don't try to control the Kundalini. Let it make, you know, some of the decisions, some of the major decisions in your life. But be sure that you are properly seeking information about the Kundalini, that you, you know, listen to these programs. If these programs are calling to you, listen to these programs and let let the kundalini begin to assist you in how it wants you to educate yourself with regards to responding to different kundalini phenomena. And that includes, as Lauren so, so appropriately asked, that includes flexing and developing the intuitive muscles that allow you to discern what it is the kundalini is actually saying to you. One of the things I really want to stress, and I've stressed this in other programs, is don't take kundalini advice from people that don't have the kundalini. Okay? Don't take kundalini advice from people that do not have the kundalini in at least the awakened or activation state. They don't know. And they're just, you know, they want to know. They want to pretend they know. Their ego will tell them, oh, yeah, you have to know this, too, to be a great personage. You know, and and so (laughs) don't take advice from them, even if they say they have it. Look at the safety protocols that we give here. Look at the phenomena that, you you know, that, that you can have with the Kundalini. See if it matches up with them. A lot of people now are on the Internet, and they, you know, they've read, say, websites like mine or or other people's websites that go into kundalini phenomena and they're going okay 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 and say okay so this is what they say about this so in order for me to advise other people even though i don't have the kundalini well i can just tell them this you know and, and god bless them if they're giving good advice but you know as much as you can do not take advice about your kundalini uh, from people that don't have it. And that includes MDs and psychologists and psychiatrists and counselors and and great spiritual personages. You know, there's some great spiritual personages out there like, uh, what's his name? Uh, little Buddhist guy that had bliss for 20 minutes and therefore considered himself enlightened. Uh, uh, well, the Power of Now guy, I forget his name, uh, does not have kundalini, has no business counseling people on kundalini. He had another 20-minute session with Grace, and that, you know, compelled him to write his book, and it was a popular book, but that that doesn't necessarily make him the best teacher to have uh, for a condition that he does not have. He has, a, he has a best-selling book, Power of Now, great, and it's got a lot of good things in it, but that does not make him enlightened at all. 
You know, he has to go through the process just like you, just like me, just like everybody else. You know, and, and because Grace gave him a book that it wanted him to write, and it knew, and he had the karma, and he had all of these things that would allow him to write that book and to affect positive change in the social environment. That's great. That's all good. And I and I and I thank him for the power of now and the other powers of whatever that he's written. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. The, uh, there's another oh, Buddhist guy. Uh, you know, he had 20 minutes worth of bliss. And and you know and, and so he's been able to to become a great personage in, in in his belief system. These people don't have the kundalini. They've had little smatterings of bliss that have compelled them to write a book. And as they write that book, they uh, you know if the, if the book turns into a bestseller, will they all of a sudden become an authority on such things? And this not this is not necessarily the case. Trust your own kundalini. Trust what it is leading you to to review. So, for instance, your kundalini may lead you to read The Power of Now. It's not because of the author. It's because of some of the material in the book will be helpful for you in your kundalini awakening experience. And it's the same, you know, go, go see Mother Mira or Ama or this other little Buddhist guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, it's not about the mouthpiece. The same with me. It's not about me being the mouthpiece of the kundalini. It's about information that the kundalini wants you to have. Forget about who's saying it. Close your eyes and listen to the words, you know, and take out the self-aggrandizement aspects like, oh, you can only receive this from person. Oh, you can only receive this from da-da-da-da, right, from this other. No. You can only receive it from your kundalini. And by, you know, Lauren said, what what are some of the exercises I can do to really bring my intuition muscles up to par? And, and basically what I will say is you go in and you trust that the kundalini is what is your major teacher. There is no other teacher, chrism included, that comes before the kundalini. You understand? But you have to know. You have to know your kundalini. You have to discern your kundalini. You have to develop that relationship with your kundalini. Otherwise, you're still blind. And you're this little, you know, new age butterfly hopping from teacher to teacher to teacher, system to system to system, basically flapping your wings and going nowhere. Okay? Understand that the kundalini in you is your ultimate guide. It is your ultimate teacher, and it is there for you to communicate with. Uh, my kundalini knows your kundalini. I know, I know that that my kundalini reaches out into you, and it will help you have that relationship with your kundalini, what, regardless of the awakened state or unawakened state it's in. If you're listening to these conversations, it's not accidental. It is not accidental. Even if you're one of these teachers that like to listen to this, to this conversation and to take my information and, and espouse it as your own, that's fine. You know, I don't care. As long as you get the information out there correctly and don't associate it with your own ego. Okay? So for all you Reiki people and yoga, Kundalini yoga people and sorcery people and all of the other people that, that want to try to get a, a handle on the Kundalini or at least an understanding of it in order to give it to other people, make sure you give it correctly and in its pure state. Okay? Uh, don't don't associate your name to it or even my name to it. Associate the Kundalini's name to it. So this is truly where it's coming from. Once again, forget about the mouthpiece. Forget about the character, the talking head on the TV, right? Uh, forget about that. Listen to the to the to the blue eyes that come to you behind your closed eyelids. Listen to the energy as it shoots up your spine or, or goes to a certain chakra as it did with as it's doing with Lauren. You know, look at that. You know, why is it why is why uh, here here's a typical sequence, you know, it'll come up to your throat chakra 
and then it will come down to your heart chakra. And then it will come down to your first chakra. So those three chakras. Well, what is it telling you? Well, to communicate love, so communication, fifth chakra, love, fourth chakra, and back down to the first chakra, which is the home of the kundalini. So it wants you to communicate within the emotions of love, the kundalini. You see, you see how this language is so very different from the spoken or written language. It's a, it's a language that is composed of, 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 of the kundalini itself, communicating to you through a tactile form of language. But that's not the only language that it communicates with you. It can, you know, it'll communicate you from a visual uh, standpoint, a tactile standpoint, an audio-only standpoint. You know, and then, of course, you know, we get into the dream teachings, which we've already kind of covered a little bit today. So, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to communicate in many, many, many different vectors and, and forms of communication. Let me give you an, uh, for instance, I'll be going to Croatia, uh, one of the most war-torn countries that, you know, aside from Afghanistan or Iraq or Libya or Syria at the moment, you know, the Kundalini won't take me to Syria because it's too hot right now. It's, there's too much abject violence taking place. But it will take me to Croatia where they've got two, 2.5 million landmines planted all over the place. Yeah. And so I go to Croatia and, well, what's the reason? Why does the Kundalini want me to go to Croatia where they still have a, a severe ethnic hatred uh, for the Serbs? And the Serbs have a you know, severe ethnic hatred for the Croats or the Croatians. It's going there. It's taking me there so that it, through me, can begin developments of peace, of love, of grace, of the understandings that come from severe levels of human tragedy and human trauma. And it's not taking me there alone. I'm going with another student who who is also receiving these instructions in the dream state. This is very important for you to understand. Kundalini is not taking me to Croatia so that I can step on a landmine. It's taking me to Croatia so that those people that have been injured through wars, through, through many of the iniquities that happened through a wartime experience, it's also taking me there for those people who have had their Kundalini awakened because of of the wartime experience. Their, activa their activation sequence involves kundalini awakening. You know, we're not all, you know, it's not all like the United States or Europe where you go to work, you come home, you feed the kids, you go into meditation, and you have your kundalini experience. For some people, the kundalini experience is attained through the traumas of warfare. You know, if you step on a landmine and you get your two legs blown off, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have the kundalini. You understand? That can be the activation sequence that your karma has determined for you. So she is sending me to Croatia to connect with certain people and to leave the energetic signature on certain things. So let me tell you what will happen. And this is a form of language. A form of language from the Kundalini. I will touch a spoon. I will touch a glass. I will touch a doorknob. I will touch a, an elevator button. I will touch the railings of a boat, and the Kundalini signature will be there for that specific person or persons who need to receive that signature. It won't go, oh, you know, tune in to Chrism's Kundalini radio show. <laughs> it won't do that. But it might. It might. Uh, there's a lot of discarnate activity in, in Croatia as well, and so there are a lot of releasements that need to do. And so I'll be doing the Pillars of Light uh, in, in, in many different areas of Croatia. A lot of ghosts, a lot of hauntings, a lot of hurt and, and angry entities that that are roaming that land by virtue of that war. And and, and uh, so we'll be putting up the, the POLs there to give them an option to move on. 
if they're ready to move on. If they can do the forgiveness work, then they can move on. And this is what myself and the student will be doing. If you have any questions, I've got 48 minutes left here in this cafe. It's a Panera's in Roner Park. <laughs> so, so for those of you that like Panera's, you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, please call in. The number is 347-934-0026. And I'd like Amelia, if she'd be willing to step on in behind the microphone here. Beautiful, wonderful Amelia. Hello. Hello, Chrism. Can you uh, also give uh, some... Uh, some indications through your KITT work, Kundalini Infused Therapeutic Touch, how you're given instruction intuitively on how to give a, a KITT uh, massage. Yes, I can, of course. Um, the KITT, the Kundalini Infused or Integrated Therapeutic Touch, is the Kundalini communicating to me. And um, when I am working with a person, when a person comes for healing, when a person comes for a massage, um, and this is something that the, the Kundalini has begun very gently with me, and as I have done more and more of it, um, it has become um, a much bigger part of, of how I work with a person. Um, it's very important when I'm doing healing that, you know, I ask, for the healing of the Kundalini knows why the person has come but the actual let's say the my desire for an outcome is not there so what I do is I begin my healing with being very devotional to the Kundalini with letting the Kundalini know of my love and devotion and setting aside my ego and the Kundalini then it's difficult to explain exactly how I feel it. It's intuitive, but I feel the energy coming through my hands, coming through all the chakras of my hands. And sometimes I will feel it going right down through a person and I know where it's going. And the Kundalini guides my hands to particular areas of a person's body. And, and interestingly, I don't actually ask a client typically to tell me everything that's going on for them. They're aware of the type of massage and um, work that I do. And very often they will tell me afterwards that they felt heat or that they felt where my hands would have stopped was exactly where they were having difficulty with. And so for me, it's about really focusing on my devotion and my attention to the Kundalini and allowing the Kundalini to flow through me and to give healing and energy to the person through through my touch. So that's that's it really. Um, but it's very important. When I began to do this initially, I suppose I got in my own way some of the time, you know. Um, but now through the Kundalini, um, I suppose just you know that doesn't happen. Um, anymore and the kundalini and the intuitive um, touch of the kundalini and the way the kundalini moves through me um, is very very beautiful and um, very often as well my eyes are closed when I'm doing this work and the kundalini will give me um, information that I yes it's, it's, very, it's a very sacred space so things are given to me um, as well during the um, the KITT that helped me to say things to a client um, from the Kundalini really. So that's that's this prism. Um, well, I can't I can't yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. I understand it. Many of these things defy uh, linear explanation. They do. They do. Many of these things defy linear explanation, and you just have to feel what is going on with them. Uh, you have to feel it. Uh, it's, it's more about discerning what it is the communication is 
coming through you. And you have to practice this. As, as, as Lauren talked earlier about uh, how do you flex, how do you exercise those muscles? Well, you have to practice. You have to practice your trust. You have to practice your devotion to Kundalini, as uh, Santara just said. Amelia? Uh, you, you need to do this all the time, really. I mean, put yourself in a position where you can be intuitive. Put yourself in a position where you can open to that inner guidance. Uh, allow yourself to trust what is being said and, and use these parameters as long as it doesn't hurt you or hurt another person or another animal okay you can trust it uh, and by hurt I mean uh, if it doesn't you know try to give you self aggrandizement you know have your your ego enriched instead of your your Kundalini enriched uh, don't listen to it if it's an ego aggrandizement don't listen to it if it's going to, to have you hurt another person or, or another animal. Uh, don't listen to it if it's going to try to build you up or to do something with you that, that shows your greatness to all people. Uh, if that's what's occurring, that is not from the Kundalini. That will be more from the ego or from a discarnate entity that is trying to, to uh, pervert or obstruct your process. Okay. Uh, so... Practice those intuitional uh, exercises. Uh, go into a forest uh, where you're not going to be in danger of getting lost. So I don't want you out there starving to death. The forest that I went into is right behind Amelia's house. And so, you know, eventually you're going to make it to the main road and you can walk on down to the house. It's not a real huge risk. But it's a great practice. Way. Another way to, to, to trust your intuition is go into a familiar place and blindfold yourself and ask the Kundalini to lead you back and see where it leads you. Be in a safe scenario. Be around safe people. Don't be out on the freeway. Don't be, <laughs> don't be in the Amazon jungle, right, unless you know it's a safe place. Uh, and then take yourself into that uh, environment blindfolded and allow the Kundalini to guide you back to that starting place. That's another way you can practice trusting the Kundalini. And trust is a huge deal. You know, uh, once your trust in the Kundalini awakening equation is established, you begin to receive uh, definitive communications from the Kundalini that will aid and allow you further progress within your evolution uh, of a kundalini nature. If you have a question about your kundalini awakening process and you want to ask it here, feel free to call United States, area code 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. I would like to thank everybody who who is listening right now in the archives and and uh, Amelia mentioned a few, and, and I remember uh, uh, Lorne, thank you, uh, Lorne, and, and Fashti is listening live right now, too, so thank you, Fashti, and Fashti, I will be responding to your kind and generous offer as well. Uh, I've been having a hard time getting online, so, uh, yes, Amelia. And Julie is there, Chris, and some other guests, but what I would like to do, if I may, I'd like to give out the website again that people can go to in order to make a donation in case the last time it was a little bit confused. As you sure. all know, sure. Prism does not charge any money for the service that he does, and he depends on donations to pay the bills, such as this internet service provider bill. So, you know, as you can hear, the show is coming from the cafe with the free internet service. So currently <laughs> donations will be very much appreciated. So I'm going to give you the website again. Um, and if you're in a position to make a donation, that would be wonderful. So the website is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the top right-hand corner, you will see the donate button, and it's a very simple procedure after that. So that's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. So thank you indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Boy, they, they really went out of their way to make that a hard one to remember, didn't they? <laughs> it's 
Scott <laughs> Block. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to write all this down too. I think I'm not. My memory is not going to hold that too long. I just want you to know that I will be everybody who is listening. I want you to know that I'll be traveling uh, beginning March 20th. The radio show will still be going every Wednesday at PST Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And uh, I don't care. You know, I'll be I'll be in New York for a while. I'll be in Ireland for a while. I'll be in France for a while. I'll be in Croatia for a while. It uh, doesn't matter. I will still do the three o'clock PST uh, time zone for this program. And if for some reason I'm unable to get to the uh, to a Wi-Fi source, which is typical when I'm traveling, uh, then I will I, I will count on Her Holiness Amelia Centara. To fill in for me, okay, Amelia? Well, yes, Chris, I will be with you for a few for some. I know. Though, so. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but yes, most certainly when you're in Croatia, of course. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, so uh, the show will still the, the show will still continue to go uh, as I'm traveling. But there's going to be different lessons to to learn. Um, for instance, uh, you know, one of my one of my issues that I've had uh, with regards to the Kundalini is swimming in the oceans, uh, swimming uh, with sharks, so to speak. And uh, I was doing that uh, when I was in my early twenties. I was out there surfing with it. And a great white shark decided to check me out to see if I was something edible. Um, fortunately, uh, I got the hint, and I uh, and I paddled back into shore. But come to find out, you know, this beautiful, clear, wonderful, beautiful waters off the coast of Croatia. Well, they they just discovered a four meter great white shark habit, habituating the area which is rare for them so I see that uh, that I am also being given some little tests and challenges to go swim with my shark friend and and uh, we'll see how things go with that uh, if I don't get back to you from Croatia it's been good talking with you all <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there okay um, if you have any questions I have about a half hour left, so call nine or three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. I will encourage everyone and anyone who can possibly make it to the uh, seminars to come. Uh, it's one thing hearing hearing it on the radio; it's another thing being there in person. The closer you get to a sun, the stronger the radiance levels are, and so I want you to understand that. And and. As I do these seminars, the kundalini comes up very strongly in me, kicks it up very strongly, and allows me to to be a conduit or a bridge for you into your own awakening equation. Okay, so do come to these seminars. I think she said there's a space open in New York. Well, go. One of you, go. And if there's and there's some more spaces opening up in Ireland. Go to these things, especially with the Irish. Uh, we go in to the into the sacred temple uh, inside of New Grange, and as she said, it is older than the pyramids. It is old. It's one of the oldest structures on the earth. And these people knew all about Kundalini. How do you think they moved the blocks? These are megatons of stone. Megatons. Hundreds of tons, thousands of tons of rock that have been stacked in a very particular mathematical equation that allows them to last 10,000 years. Okay? I mean, I don't know of any building standards at the moment that are going to change the type of longevity. Now, there are, they're starting to unearth. Uh, pyramids in Bosnia. They're starting to enter pyramids off the coast of Japan. Pyramidal structures stand the test of time. Okay, your kundalini structure will stand the test of 
time. It looks like I'm really getting over overcome with noise around me here. So I just want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to sign off, and I want to say thank you to everyone who has listened and is listening in, in the chat room right now, and who has listened in the in the archives. Your future people here. Thank you very much for listening to this program, and I look forward to talking with you again, hopefully under quieter circumstances, next week. Thanks for listening.